if cats were in animals, I feel like they'd be the ones that were like pulling the strings from behind the whole time. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my album review of Pink Floyd's Animals, uh, which was released in 1977. Of course, like usual, if you'd like, you can go back and listen to my first listens of every song on the album. As of this moment, I've heard four albums from Pink Floyd, Metal, Dark Side of the Moon, Animals, and Wish You Were Here. As of this moment, Animals is my favorite Pink Floyd album. There's just something about every song on this album that hits me exactly where I want to be hit. And while the other albums are phenomenal as well, there's just something different about this one. I really enjoy the Orwellian look uh, at political and social classes and disparities, the violence and ruthless dogs, the greedy and malicious pigs who are ruling at the top, uh, and then the brainwashed and thoughtless sheep who just follow without second thought. It's both an honest and scathing review of society, but at the same time, it also offers a little bit of hope especially in the ending. And the way that Pink Floyd brings these concepts to life, uh, of course, based on the book Animal Farm, the ideas are simply conceived, but they're so deep in their meaning, and especially through all their songwriting, which is something that we expect from a band of the caliber of Pink Floyd. The concepts are brought to life musically, lyrically, thematically. I love all the cynicism that comes through, the dark humor, the dark touches throughout the album. But at the same time, for an album that's steeped, in this darkness, there's also a lot of light and a lot of hope, especially as the album is bookended by Pigs on the Wing, uh, two songs that are a little more optimistic in their outlook, offering a glimpse of brighter things ahead and into the future. Opening with part one, which is just a nice and sweet acoustic ballad to open up the track. It's only about a minute and I believe 30 seconds. The acoustic guitar sweetly speaks to us from Gilmore and the lyrics really describe the, uh, the vulnerabilities that the characters feel and yet at the same time offering comfort, offering hope and love in these darker lyrics that we're about to kind of partake in with the next few songs. Coming out of the ending of Pigs on the Wing, we're introduced into Dogs, the mammoth of an epic of a song on this album. One thing I find interesting about the song is the point of view. So it begins almost from the point of view of the master or the instructor who's training these dogs, who's training these people to be vicious beasts, fearless beasts, to take order without question, to take action without question in their ruthlessness. Roger's delivery throughout this song in particular is commanding and very dominant. And this song in particular features what I would say is some of Gilmore's best work that I've heard from him. Setting you up with solo after solo after magnificent solo. Just when you think like there's no more solos, he throws another one at you. And then the whole song steps into this deep and moving groove, beautiful bass work. Uh, accented by wonderful keys as well. It's in this section with the echoing lyric of Stone that we're thrown into this beautiful ambience, reminiscent to me of Echoes and that ambient section in that song. And it's here that Wright is really allowed to do his thing and expand. We get the return of Seamus, man's best friend, Pink Floyd's best friend. <laughs> And that brings me to another point throughout this album, the use of the animal sound effects. If you're going to use animal sound effects in songs that are titled after those animals, it could come across super cheesy, like really like obvious, you know, like just like, what are you doing? You know, you could have gotten the point across without using these typical sound effects. No, but the way that Pink Floyd does it, so intelligent and creative in the way they integrate the sound effects or the dogs barking, for example, in this song throughout the music. For example, here we have the sound of the dogs barking that's distorted. I believe it was through a talk box, but the barks expand and contract and they kind of move with the music in this very organic way. And then after this, the acoustic returns as it washes back in before stepping right back into that rhythm that we heard initially. And it's just as good, if not better than the last time we heard it. And then soon after, as we think the song is about to end, especially like as a first listen, as I did before, like it sounds like it's gonna end, but then it all picks up and comes right back in with this mountain of a climax, this mountain and momentous resolution in which we also get some of what I would say is Roger's best uh, vocal performance emotionally. Mason sends it off the charts with his impassioned and insistent drumming, which is just fantastic in this moment, making it feel like the grand finale that it's supposed to be. And it's a really nice send off for the first song. Pigs, three different ones, sets you up with kind of the same expectations, this time giving you a little bit of a harder rock blues groove that it sets you into. The pig sound effects, the keys, uh, the bass and Mason on the drums 
we kind of know what we're getting into with this one. Roger's center stage with the vocals, and it's his inflammatory delivery that really sets this song on fire. Dealing with the pigs who are representing those who are higher in society, using their position for, for terrible things and kind of being the greedy and the filthy, dirty pigs of the world, abusing their power to those who are perhaps beneath them. And fitting that theme, this is the harshest song on the album. With its blazing blues guitar, its harsh and critical lyrics, this is an example of what Pink Floyd can do when they want to be a little heavier. And not necessarily like metal heavy, but message thematically. And musically, yes, it's a heavy song. Through the use of the pig's sound effects through a talk box that Gilmore's using, and it's so cool. I mean, you guys have to admit, even if you don't love the music, you have to admit the intelligence to be able to do this to be able to incorporate the pig's grunting and sounds into the guitar itself and kind of play around with that performing this awesome solo. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just creative, beyond creative. And then out of the solo, uh, we get a nice and sublime bass line that just picks it right back up along with the keys, just like it had opened the song with. It's a nice return to form. It's a nice return to where they had began. By the way, the 2016 live version, which was filmed and uh, performed in Mexico, creative backdrop. That's all I'm gonna say. Very creative, Pink Floyd. Very creative. <laughs> Sheep has one of my favorite entrances into the song itself, uh, and Sheep is just <laughs> a great song. Those sweet, hypnotic keys. They just lull you in. They're so good. I think Sheep is a song that belongs to Wright, and he owns it. Not only those keys, but the way that the bass comes in, and it's slightly reminiscent of the way that the bass comes in on one of these days off of their album Metal. One of the coolest things in the song is the way that Roger's voice uh, blends into Wright's keyboard and synth work. I think that's one of the coolest things that I've heard from Pink Floyd yet. And as it fades into that synth line, it's cool how they allow that verse to kind of build up a little bit, add in some really nice guitar work before going right back into the next lines in that verse. Just a creative way of bringing in and allowing movement throughout the verses. Then we have a similar theme with the reoccurrence with the stone lyric, which is echoed back in Dogs. We get it here again before this song moves into something a little darker. It's here in the abattoir section where the song becomes cold, the music becomes dark, and everything kind of like dims down and becomes like a little more like sinister and menacing. This is probably the darkest moment on the album as we have the figurative sheep led through the slaughterhouse and into the slaughterhouse towards their impending doom. We're thrown in there right with them. It's appropriately hypnotic in the way that Wright creates this space and we get a parody of Psalm 23 read, but it's read, first of all, with different words, but in a much more ominous and frightening tone. And referring to the original verse in the Bible, it's speaking about how God is uh, going to comfort and protect and provide safety to those trusting in him. But here in the music and how they so smartly twist it around, they twist it into the thoughtlessness of the sheep and how they're just following without thinking, but at the same time not taking action, not taking thought into themselves, and actually just following the words into their own death. But out of this cold and disheartening section, we rise into something much bigger, much grander, as the rest of the band continues to jam out of this, symbolizing the uprising of the sheep, as they kind of realize, like, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> and they end up overtaking and killing the dogs, who were the enforcers. So once again, conceptually, this album, I think, is perfect. It, it provides the concept in such a simple, basic way that you can easily understand it. But the way that they bring in the music, they put it together with the lyrics and the message and the themes, it, it comes across so much deeper. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why this is my favorite Pink Floyd album so far. It's just because of how strong the songwriting is. And then we end with Pigs on the Wing Part 2, which is pretty much the exact same song as Pigs on the Wing Part 1 musically. But this time after listening to the past few songs, it sounds a little bit more recharged. It sounds reinvigorated and refreshed. And while the runtime is also the same, it also feels like there's a lot more said and resolved in this song. It's a really nice conclusion to this epic of an album that wraps everything up, all the darkness and all the battles and things that took place. It kind of wraps it all up in a more brighter future package, filled with a little bit of hope and a little bit of romance. Now I'm going to move over a little bit so I can put some graphics on here as we go through our favorite moments, our favorite lyrics, and our song rankings in the album. Getting into my favorite moment on the album, it's the butcher house, it's the slaughterhouse, it's the abattoir section in Sheep. I just think that the way they like dimmed down the lights, they created this 
very ominous and, and menacing atmosphere that even as a listener, you feel like you're thrown into the slaughterhouse with the rest of the sheep. And you feel like you're in a crowd with them and you can't like, you can't get out. And it's so cold and the announcer overhead repeating these lines that are supposed to be comforting but actually just come across as very cold and discomforting and uncomfortable. It really is the standout moment in this whole album out of what is probably my favorite song. My favorite lyrics on the album are actually the ending of Dogs. Uh, I'll read it here. Who was born in a house full of pain? Who was trained not to spit in the fan? Who was told what to do by the man who was broken? By trained personnel who was fitted with collar and chain, who was given a pat on the back? Who was breaking away from the pack? And it goes on and on from there. I'll leave the rest of it up there for you. But first of all, musically, that is just an intense section after a mountain of a song like Dogs. That is just a really cool way of bringing everything back, bringing back everything musically and thematically, and just like throwing it in our face for one last big moment. But at the same time, the lyrics are so intense and powerful in their meaning, especially when you understand the whole concept of the album and of the song specifically, and who the dogs are, what they're supposed to represent. In just these few lines, we really get the idea of the life of these dogs who have been, you know, born into a house of pain, trained through violence, trained to be violent, trained to be the aggressor, and then what do they end up with in the end? As it says in the last lines, who was found dead by the phone, who was dragged down by the stone? Revisiting those themes that were mentioned before in the song and just kind of bringing it all together in this really big climax. Let's get to my song rankings on the album. Sheep, dogs, pigs, three different ones, followed by Pigs on the Wing, part one and two. I'm just putting these together because I kind of put them on the same level. I really do enjoy this album from start to finish, and I don't really think that there's necessarily a weak spot on it. I'm more impressed by Dogs and Sheep than the other songs, but the other songs kick just as well. Fantastic concept, musically brought to life, lyrically <laughs> really brought to life. Songwriting is, to me, I, I don't want to say perfect, but I think the songwriting really is perfect in this one. Not overly long at all, perfect runtime. I just really enjoy this album, and it's an album that I can see myself coming back to time and time and time again. I don't know where this album ranks in their catalog amongst like the popular and amongst like the fans, but I haven't heard a lot about it. Maybe it's just a little underrated. I don't know. But as of right now, it's my favorite one. Of course, I would love to know your thoughts on the album. Definitely let me know your favorite songs, your favorite moments, if any of the lyrics touched you specifically or that you enjoy a lot. I would love to hear your opinions on what albums I should perhaps listen to next from them. I hope that you join me on Twitter. You're more than welcome to join me in the comments down below. Hope you have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.